In this case, we'll discuss both sinks and voids together since most of their causes tend to be the same. If your defect was a result of a high melt temperature, then the polymer can shrink excessively, causing sinks and voids virtually anywhere on the part. Aside from an increase in melt temperature, you're most likely to see an increase in the fill-only part weight as well as a drop in the pressure at transfer. Unlike the high melt temperature, low temperature polymer increases the pressure loss in the mold and this often results in sinks or voids near the end of fill. In this case, you'll often see an increase in pressure at transfer and a lower part weight during fill. As with a lower melt temperature, a low injection rate can also cause high pressure losses again resulting in sinks or voids near the end of fill. But a drop in pressure at transfer will also occur. If the transfer point is set too high, too little material will enter the mold during fill and this will result in shrinkage near the end of fill. In this case, you would see a drop in both pressure at transfer and the part weight during fill. Too often, pack and hold pressures are increased to correct for sinks and voids. You should first verify that filling related outputs such as fill weight, pressure at transfer, and melt temperature are the same before adjusting these pressures. If you see a sink or void near the gate, it's typically the result of insufficient hold time. When the mold temperature is too high, excessive shrinkage will occur anywhere in the part. This is especially true with semi-crystalline polymers whose crystallinity increases when the rate of cooling is reduced. These are plastics like nylon, acetal, as by way of example. In such a process, you may see little change in the process except for a rise in the pressure at transfer. In a case unique to voids, a low temperature mold can cause the polymer to freeze to the mold surface. As a result, most of the shrinkage takes place internally, causing the polymer to pull away from itself, creating voids. To many molders and their customers, short shots can be one of the most frustrating and costly defects. When you have a low mold temperature, too much pressure loss uh, can occur during fill and this results in an increase in transfer pressure and a drop in all of the part weights. As with a low mold temperature, low injection rate increases the pressure losses in the mold. In this case, the pressure at transfer should decrease. When the transfer set point is too high, you will see a drop in pressure at transfer as well as all of the part weights. In most molding processes, the packing phase should be used to fill the last few percent of the mold cavity. If the packing pressure happens to be set too low, the fill only part weight will not change but the part weights after pack and hold will decrease. Jetting or worming is a unique defect that occurs when a stream of material shoots into the mold at the start of fill rather than creating a smooth flow front. A low melt temperature increases the material's viscosity. This viscosity can prevent the material from creating a smooth fountain flow as it enters the mold. In this kind of example, you should observe an increase in pressure at transfer and a drop in the fill only part weight. A high injection rate can prevent the polymer from creating a proper flow through the gate. If this is the case, you should see an increase in transfer pressure and fill only part weight. And you'll also notice a drop in fill time. 
Lastly, jetting will occur if the mold temperature is too low. In this, if this is the case, you'll see little change to the process except for an increase in the pressure at transfer. As you can see, if the process is documented, the scientific troubleshooter can quickly identify what has changed. In this section, we'll cover the typical steps or methodology to scientific troubleshooting. Step one, examine the part and make sure that your diagnosis is correct. Step two, although we stress a scientific approach to uh, troubleshooting, you should always investigate the simply obvious cases or causes, I should say. For instance, if you have splay, check the material and the dryer to make sure that it is adequately dried. That's one example. Compare the current process with the documented process. Without proper documentation, troubleshooting can only guess what has changed. Make the changes necessary to correct the defect and return the process back to the standard. Once the defect is corrected, verify that your process is running to the standard. This helps prevent other defects from occurring in the future. Document the changes that were made so that there is a record. In conclusion, it's not only about troubleshooting a process. All factors such as material, mold, machine, part design, and technology must be documented. As mentioned before, everyone who attended this meeting is eligible to receive a free trial of our Intelligent Molder series which covers proper process documentation in detail. We also are going to make you a 10-day uh, online training offer and I'll, I'll send you a follow-up email that will contain instructions on how to download worksheets, instructions on receiving this uh, free trial, as well as webinar notes and a special offer that is uh, eligible for anybody who uh, participated in this seminar. Now I can answer some of the questions that you've had uh, relating to this uh, presentation. Uh, but before we begin, I'd like to uh, suggest that those who ask questions relating to our interactive training and global standards for plastic certification program, uh, please resend those through email or just call me uh, at the uh, number listed below.